morning everybody. I am uh, on my way to help some folks whose dogs were trained by off-leash canine. The North Las Vegas dog trainer, dog trainer, who last week was seen on video um, with a baseball bat. Um, you don't physically see him in the video actually beat the dog, but uh, I don't I don't need to see him hit it to know that when he's off frame and I hear the strike noises and hear the dog screaming to not know what he's doing um, so I had seen a couple of posts a bunch of people tagged me in some posts and uh, I had the privilege of someone connecting me to somebody who had had their dogs in with this trainer and the dogs were uh, not right the dogs came home not right I've gotten a bunch of calls in the last week or so uh, from people who are, are looking to try to rehabilitate their dogs in the wake of their dogs being uh, brutally abused uh, because that's what it is. It's abuse. It is animal abuse, plain and simple. Let's be real clear. There's no reason, no legitimate reason to use a baseball bat on a dog. Not in this, certainly not in any training work that I have ever seen. No legitimate reason. Let me repeat that. There is no legitimate reason to use a baseball bat on a dog. I've got my softball bat at the office. <laughs> but it's not for the dogs. It's in case anybody breaks into Hydra Club. It's for humans. It's not for dogs. Joking aside, this is not a joking matter. Um, I have been saying for some time that the utter lack of regulation on this industry is unconscionable. Under no circumstances would you leave your human child alone with somebody who did not have the necessary certifications to be caring for a child. Things as simple as first aid, uh, things as simple as emergency evacuation and protocols. Um, and you, I say simple because you would think that that would be simple. Just having a love of dogs is not a sufficient reason to be responsible for the stewardship of their care. It's not. In fact, um, it is a very tenuous line you must walk between a deep love and compassion for the dogs and the ability to step back from the emotion so that you can lead the dogs and teach the dogs in I don't want to say in a slightly emotionally detached distance. I cannot apply my human emotion to a dog. Um, and at the same time, I must still show that dog compassion and kindness. Uh, it is simple, though for some people it would appear not easy. It boggles my mind. Boggles my mind. Now, I don't know what I'm going to find when I get to this house today. I could find some dogs that are deeply suspicious and fearful of humans. I could find dogs with extreme reactivity. I could also find an owner who is so deeply distraught by the experience that they've had um, that, that their emotional state may actually be exacerbating the dog's behavior. I don't know any of those things. All I know is that there is someone in need and some dogs in need. And uh, I get the great privilege to, to see if I am the person who, who can help them. So I post this here and offer this, this out specifically here in the Las Vegas area. If there is anyone uh, who knows somebody whose dogs were uh, subjected to to that that trainer and you feel that your dog needs some help uh, please reach out to me uh, I can't promise that I'm the person that can address the problems I can't promise that I can fix everything uh, but I will do in my power what I can and I'm, I'm offering these folks my time free of charge today um, you know and I'm, I'm hoping that we can get these dogs right grace to me that this individual uh, continued to state that holding the baseball bat was legitimate. I just, if you have a
reactive dog or there's a dog that is reactive and you're trying to work it through the reactivity, the solution is not to hit it with a baseball bat. Now, a reactive dog is going to come at you. A reactive dog is going to probably try to bite you. So it would behoove you as a trainer to perhaps muzzle the dog in your early training work so that you can work with the dog without the dog actually being able to make contact with you. In order to get a dog through a certain behavior, I have to push it as far into its discomfort as I can and through to the other side. There's no way to avoid it. I don't get a dog to not be fearful by breaking a dog's spirit. It doesn't work with dogs and it doesn't work with people. You don't, you, you will accomplish a result. I don't know it's the result that any of us want. I, uh, I'm gonna have to get my crying out in the car ahead of time because when I think about what these dogs have been through and I think about this poor owner who thought they were doing something good for their dogs and thought that they were doing the right thing and, and sought out a trainer and engaged a trainer. They did all those things right. And the person they chose betrayed that trust. The person they chose betrayed the profession to which they allegedly belong. You know, when you're selecting someone for the care of your dog, now, there was a recently a story that came out where, you know, someone from the Association for Professional Dog Trainers said, well, they should be APBDT certified. You know, you need to make sure that they have a certification. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I mean, look, I'm a member of APDT. Um, I apparently don't pay them enough to be in their certification referral network. I, that's okay. I belong to the network. Um, I believe in professional associations and organizations and I belong to several of them and none of them are responsible for my skill set. I learn, it's continuing education, I'm always learning and watching videos and going to classes and talking to peers and, and, and doing what I can to expand my knowledge and understanding. Because if I, let's just say I had been formally and full-time working with dogs for the last 40 years and I were still using the techniques and the philosophies of 40 years ago, I, I would be doing my clients and their dogs, or I should say my clients and their humans, a disservice because much has been learned thanks to research and scientists who are doing great work in labs in places like Duke and at Yale and in Hungary and the UK and in Germany and all over California, there's, there's research and work being done into dog behavior, the evolution of dogs, the behavior of dogs, how devil, uh, evolution and domestication uh, can be applied and should be applied as an influence in how we engage with dogs in our relationships with them. That when I, when I go by information that is 40, 30, 40, even 20 years old, I am by definition flawed because I am incomplete in my knowledge. The day I know everything about dogs, the day my method is the method and the only method to use with a dog is the day that I need to stop doing what I'm doing because it means that I am limiting myself by what my tiny little brain expectations have. I must continue to grow and to learn. I must continue to push the boundaries. I must continue to push my knowledge and my experience and, and be willing to be wrong. Be willing to say, I don't know. Be willing to say to someone, you know what? I'm not the right teacher for you. I'm the not the right teacher for your dog. Here's somebody else who can provide you and your dog with a better service. If I'm really good at what I do, if I'm really legitimate at what I do, I don't make like I can help every dog on the planet. I don't make like I can help every person because you know what, I can't. I can't, I'm not, I am not all that. So, I may not be the person to help 
help these people. This may be nothing more than an hour or two of my time talking with some people, trying to ascertain what their needs might be and helping them find a better resource that can really help them. Does it make me better than others? Maybe, I don't know, it's not a contest. I can't even wrap my brain around it. 